Hey there, I'm Alex. This is Live Portrait, and I was actually holding off on doing this video because a few days ago, when I was going to start doing it, I found out that the video to video version was coming out. And you can actually get your hands on that version out right now, but it's still in development, so I didn't want to fully cover it. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use Live Portrait strictly from st uh, static image into video, right? I'll still point you in the direction of where you can grab the video to video version of it. But again, it's still in development. It's going to be released imminently, but I don't want to cover it until it's fully released because I'm sure things will change. So once it's out and released, I'll, I'll cover it properly. So let, let me get into it. So this is, this is the the website of of the paper right and you can you can go ahead and check it out I'll post links to everything I show you right now on the description below and this is really impressive I was already mind blown by how well this thing worked and the moment I got my hands on the video to video one is it's just crazy um, but this is incredibly exciting it works really well it has its caveats it has it has it, its issues, of course. It's not, you know, perfect, like ready for production or anything like that. But uh, if you're doing something that's very complex with faces, having something like this as a starting point is absolutely incredible. So I figured I'd, I'd show you this. And th see here in the website, they show a few examples of video to video. So that's also really exciting and it works incredibly well but not only that it's so fast and so it doesn't require a lot of resources so it's really impressive um, so I'll, I'll let you browse through the website uh, but I did want to show you a few of the githubs that that I looked at so the first website uh, the first project here in github is the comfy UI life portrait KJ by Kijai and he's been doing all sorts of tools for comfy UI for a while and they're, they're all really really good um, so this one's the one I'm using there's other options of course but uh, this one seems to work really well out of the box like most of the stuff he does and one thing I wanted to show you about this one or a couple things is uh, if you go into the examples folder here right what you'll find is the workflow so this is the workflow that you're gonna be dumping into comfy UI to get started and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a moment but more importantly you want the assets folder here and that this is uh, just for you to have a starting point of the videos that are driving the image and then just images as a test. You can of course add your own, but it's just nice to have something out of the box for you to test. So the other thing I wanted to show you about this is the video, like I said, the video to video version isn't fully released yet. It's being developed and that's why I'm not fully covering it because things will most likely change. But if you go here into this GitHub and, and change the to the development branch, right? this version has video to video like the instructions everything looks exactly the same i had a bit of trouble installing it but i made it work in the end but this version right here this will give you video to video at least when i installed it three four days ago it might have changed but i think you should still be fine looking at the dates here so okay so that's kijai's live portrait implementation then there's another one here and I know a bunch of people are using this one as well, so I'll, I'll link you to this one as well. I haven't tested it, but it's there. And um, this is just, I, I wanted to show you how uh, in, in, in GitHub, somebody asked like, when is the video to video coming? And it's scheduled, taking a few days. So again, it's it seems like it's imminent. It's coming right around the corner. So I, I did want to show you that. Then the other thing I want to show you is you can actually go on Hugging Face and try this without having to do the whole comfy UI thing. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just go on here, you can upload your own images, your own videos, and then run it, and then you can just test it. Of course, having the option of being in the back end with comfy UI has all the niceness that, you, that comes with it, which is you have all the flexibility in the world, right? And us as compositors, we, we it's just nice to have the notes, I guess, and 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 the flexibility of, of uh, pushing it and trying to break it or just see how far you can take it. Whereas this is just the tool implemented uh, on Rails, right? So again, here you can just select any image. So let's go ahead and select this one. And then you can select any driving video. So let's, let's keep this this guy here. And then you, ju you would just say animate. And of course, like I said, you can, you can uh, upload your own stuff here. And it'll take a second, I think, uh, let's see, about 37 seconds. All right, and there it is. So what you'll see here, if we play this back, is 
you know the image that we have as an input is being driven by the video right so that's the whole the whole deal behind this so if i play this back you see it might be a bit easier to see with the actual video on the left um yeah so this is uh, incredible that took i mean i paused for the recording for a bit but that took maybe 20 seconds it, it's really really fast and of course it's going to depend how long the video is it takes longer of course so i'll i'll point you into the direction of this hugging face um link as well so you can go ahead and test it so now in comfy uh this is what the workflow looks like by default when you bring it in so it's very straightforward unfortunately there's not a lot of documentation not a lot no there's no documentation that i could find for for the knobs in the in the main node but it's still pretty straightforward uh you can you can it's so easy to process these images that you can just do a bunch and make changes and you'll see uh, after a few generations what they do so I'm not gonna go terribly in depth into what each does just because I am saving that for when I do the video version because the node has changed slightly and but yeah like I said it's not it's not terribly complicated so what I was saying before about the let me just bring it in here the the examples folder is that when you install it everything comes in there by default right so what you're gonna have is a driving and a source folder and the driving is basically all of these videos that you, you see in the example. So you have those as a starting point. And then you have the source, which are just you know, images of portraits, right? So you can just, of course, use your own. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab one here and drag it in just for the example. And it looks like this has been loaded by default, uh, which is nice. The one thing that you have to know is that when you, when you do your first generation, you're going to be wondering where's my video, why it's not being saved. So you just have to come here into the video combine node and make sure that you enable save output so that that's going to go ahead and write it. Otherwise you're going to get a preview, but you're not going to write it out. So I, I don't, I'm not uh, going to be writing any of these out, but just know that's there if you want your generations to be saved. The next thing you want to know is frame load cap, right? So at the moment, if I were to generate this, the result is going to be as long as the driver is, right? So let's say the driving video is 500 frames long, then your generation is going to be 500 frames long. Uh, in my case, just so that I can show, give you a demo of what it, uh, how fast it is in, in real time without me speeding up or, or pausing the video, I'm just going to keep it fairly short. So I'm going to say I only want, I want to keep that frame cap at 24 frames and I'm going to go ahead and queue prompt. So what the first time it takes a bit longer just because it, it has to load the model but there, there you go <laughs> that's what a second looks like so if i let's go ahead 120 frames uh, q prompt again just to give you an idea what uh, five times the amount of frames looks like you see that, that green line at the top is just going really fast uh, so now it takes a second to combine it into video and there we go so this is saving mp4s just so you know you can of course change the format no, you have a bunch of options there available to you but this is this is really impressive uh the fact that you can get here in seconds is still unbelievable to me and i i've yet to have the time to fully dive in and try to push it to the limit um I have tested a bunch of stuff, mainly on on the video to video one, because that's that I find that a bit more more useful for our case uh, in in VFX. But this is this is great, and as you can see, this example that I've that I've chosen, she is moving her head, right? So what you're gonna notice, especially when I cover the video to video one next, is the video to video is also affected by the movements in your video. So if you're just interested in giving a performance inside the face then you probably want to use a video that doesn't have any head movement like she does right so if i if i go ahead and and change that to a different one that doesn't move move their head right like this guy right here so he's barely moving his head if i go ahead and generate that i'm going to keep it short say 50 frames so i'm going to cue that again it'll take a second to cook uh so you see, it's, I don't know, it's not even 10 seconds, it's wild. So you see, there we go, right? So then the, the head is still moving a bit, so you could you could stabilize it if it's something you don't want to mess up uh, that's already working in your moving footage, but just know that any motion in the head is also reflected on, 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 your, on the generation. However, there are knobs here to control that, so you could just say, I only want the eyes, I only want the mouth, you can do that. 
but I feel like the result isn't great. It's definitely not as good as when you generate everything. So again, I'm going to wait for the video to video one to come out for, with the updated node and some of those things will and might and will change. Um, but I guess the idea today was just to uh, show you show you what a couple examples look like here. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and drag something different in. Um, and then the speed you've already seen, this is just wild. So I'm going to go ahead and create that one now. And you might get an error, like if you say frame load cap and the number is higher than uh, than you have available, you will error out. So just know you, you might uh, you might want to make sure that the frame load cap that you're addressing that you're assigning is correct to the video. Otherwise, you can just set the frame load cap to zero, and that's gonna generate the whole the whole length of the video, right? So uh, here's our result. And again, this is a nice one because he's barely moving his head. So maybe if you're doing it for images like we're doing right now, a bit of head movement is nice. But when you have video moving that already has the moving head, then introducing further movement sometimes is a bit tricky. Um, the one thing I did want to say on, on, on these generations is that, let me see if there's, there's an example here. Uh, with uh, someone with a beard, I don't think we have one. But what, what I've noticed is, if I go here to source. Okay, now we don't have anyone with a beard, but what I've noticed is that what, the more complex the image is, right, in terms of texture, the less uh, good the result is. So if you have a beard and the move, the 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 yeah the 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 face is moving around a lot, then what you're gonna see is that there's the temporal consistency isn't quite there yet, but still it's great. Uh, it's not bad at all. Let me go ahead and find a, a, a picture of someone with a beard. All right, so here's an example of someone with a beard, and what you'll see is, and you can actually see it in the hair as well. When there when there's a lot of head movement introduced, there's almost like a bit of flickering that's happening. Same, same with the beard. Same happens with the teeth. So any any pattern that is easily visible will get this same effect, and that's why I I, I think it's it's most useful at the moment on faces that have very little features so very very smooth skin you know uh stuff like uh, of course women or or younger younger people the moment you start introducing a lot of a lot of facial hair it does sort of flicker a bit i can, i still think having this starting point is incredible and definitely worth taking a look but just something to keep in mind and this is of course just the first version i imagine there's going to be better models coming in the future but just something to keep an eye out so um i think that does it for me today hopefully you find you find it uh, helpful I'll, again i'll post links to everything in the description and yeah hopefully soon as soon as uh, next week or the week after the video to video one is fully released and i'll be covering that in a bit more depth all right cheers